Gospel chapter 8. Gospel of St. Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8. Sundays, the next three Sundays, at least we'd like to travel and look at this Mark chapter 8. We want to do a three week series from this subject back to the basics. Back to the basics. collection of these three sermons will be titled Combating Spiritual Blindness. Okay. Right. Combating Spiritual Blindness. All right. Mark chapter 8 beginning at verse number 10. And immediately He got into the boat with his disciples and went to the district of Dalmanutha. The Pharisees came and began to argue with him, seeking from him a sign from heaven to test him. Look at your neighbor and say, to test him. And he sighed deeply in his spirit and said, why does this generation seek a sign? Yeah. Truly I say to you, no sign will be given to this generation. All right. Verse 13, and he left them, got into the boat again, and went to the other side. Combating spiritual blindness. You may be seated. Please bear with me as we ease into this sermon. Come on, I promise you will speed up. Let's see what God has to say. All right. <clears throat> All of us have labeled folk based off of what we see. Come on, break. It is man's natural tendency and or proclivity to go or to assume based off of how we perceive things. Perception, brothers and sisters, has oftentimes sent us into territory that we would much rather not have went. Because oftentimes we assume things before we have factual evidence. The idea, brothers and sisters, even in church, is that just because a person can wear a suit on Sunday morning, 
just because they know when to clap their hands, when to say amen, when to bow their head, when to smile. They know when to open up their Bibles. They know what song is being sung, what scripture is being read. They know how to witness with the preacher. They know when the preacher is elevating, if you will, or intoning into his or her message. They know what to do because they are accustomed to what's going on in church. Yeah. There is church talk, brothers and sisters. If you have been in church the least amount of time, uh, you know that there is a language that church folk own all to themselves. Come on, talk back to me if you can. And so when you hear a certain phrase that says, talk back to me if you can, you know when to say amen. If I say much power, you'll say much, much pride, you'll say much power. If I say little pride, you'll say what? A little power, that's church talk. And because we've been in church a long time or semi a long time and we know what's going on in church, we assume that the very person that's sitting next to us, come on, help me in here, is saved, is sanctified, is Holy Ghost filled, is on their way to heaven. Can I put a pin mark right here and chase this rabbit? Just because you know how to shout, just because you know the preacher's cliches, just because you have some good book down in your spirit does not mean that you're saved. Come on, talk back to me. Just because you know how to say hallelujah, just because you get caught up in emotional platitudes during the service, just because tears flow from your face because the choir just sang about a man named Jesus, does not mean you're going to heaven. If you want to get to heaven, you need to know who Jesus is. Here it is for yourself. Come here, nigga, people. You must be. You show sure them got to be born again. Do I have five or six folk in the building who can testify? I'm born again. How you know, Pastor? I'm saved, sanctified, and Holy Ghost healed. Here it is. I don't just shout when I come to church. I don't just praise him when I come to church. I don't just pray when I come to church. But I praise God in church. I pray when I come to church. Because when I was outside of church, come on, help me in here. There were some things that took place on the outside that ran me in here on the inside. And since I'm here today, I can testify that if the Lord does not do anything else for me, he's already. Yeah, He's already. He's already. He's already done enough. Huh? Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. There is a difference between being spiritually minded and spiritually blinded. You hear what I'm just saying? Uh, there, there is a there is a marked difference uh, between being spiritually minded and spiritually blinded. One, both blind and deaf author and educator Helen Adams Keller says the only thing worse than being blind is having sight but no vision. Rewind, play some y'all don't know when to shout. She says uh, the only thing worse than being blind is having sight and no vision. And there are some folks who've been in church 15, 20, 25 years, time three, uh, and they still don't know when to shout. They still don't know when to say amen. Uh, here it is. Uh, if God hadn't done anything else for you, uh, keep on sitting in your seat uh, on your own. But I'm talking to five or six folk, uh, maybe two or twenty folk in the building uh, who can testify. If it had not been for the Lord uh, who was on my side, I know where I would be. I'd be somewhere strung out on crack. I'd be somewhere in the hospital. I'd be somewhere out of my mind. But blessed be the name of the Lord who gives us the victory. Uh, so you have folk who are spiritually minded. Uh, but then you have folk who are spiritually blinded. <laughs> and we tend to label folk. We tend to categorize people based off of what we see, based off of our own perceptions. Huh? And we tend to look at folk and we divide folk by way of those who are churchy and those who are Christians. Come on, talk back to me if you can. Uh, those, those, who, those, those who look the part, 
huh? And those who who just have lip service. Right. Are you in here? Uh, so, 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 those those who, who come to church to spectate and those who come to church not just to look but to participate come on, come on. Uh, and there ought to be at least a few folk am I talking to any pop members in the building uh, who can tell me you didn't come to look at nobody else this morning uh, you came to see Jesus come on help me huh? Uh, yeah you smell good yeah you look good we can talk about your suit after church come on help me uh, I can ask you about the latest come on here it is uh, after church uh, I can ask you about that nice Baptist hat you got on after church. But since I'm in the household of the faith, I came to church to do war because Satan tried to kill me last night. Satan tried to destroy me last night. Satan tried to steal my joy yesterday. Satan came through my children day before yesterday. And since I woke up this morning because of God's grace, I'm going to give him the best praise. I'm going to give him the best worship. Do I have 30 folk in the building? Who can stand up on their feet? How about your neighbor say, baby, I came to do war. That's why I came to church. Huh? Huh? I came to church to do war. You heard me say this. You heard, you heard, you heard me say this. You heard me say this. Listen, in the clothes that you have on this morning, prevents you from being able to fight? Ah, then you just might be too cute in church. Are you in here? You see, you see, we learn in here how to fight the adversary. Watch this here. Sometime in here, but all of the time out there. Huh? So we come into church to learn how to do a war cry. We come in the church to learn more about the God of our salvation. And the more I learn about him, the more I grow in his grace. The more I know about him, the more I talk to him. The more I know about him, the more I discover he's a healer. The more I know about him, the more I discover he's a way maker. The more I know about him, the more I discover he's a He's a heart fixer. So, so I move from, if you will, fellowship to relationship. And Helen Keller says, a uh, mighty poor person who can see mm, clearly and lacks vision. Are you in here? So today, even in the visible church, there are people, y'all give me about 10 minutes. Y'all say it to you. Time to. There are people, if you will, who are active in church, serve faithfully in their respective auxiliaries. And give faithfully to kingdom business. Are you in here? But they are yet without vision. I mean, they look good. 